I want to let everybody know. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, you know, he's on that Mount Rushmore. Tom mm -hmm. Brady, he's on that Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. There's a commit to Ohio State. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, Quinn, yeah. Ewers. Quinn Ewers, I was just going to tell you about it. Quinn Ewers, okay. I just learned of this dude yesterday. And his herald is the number one guy. And at all these camps, he's f***ing around throwing submarine sidearm throws. And they're better than everybody else. Quinn Ewers is going to be the guy. South Lake, Texas is the kind of place where the high school football stadium resembles most college fields, and the local high school athletic colors, the Carroll Dragons green and white, run through the North Texas city in every direction. High school football is king in Texas, and in South Lake at Carroll High School, everyone lives for 7 p.m. on a Friday night. The Dragons do have a winning history. They went 79-1 over a five-year period and was recognized with three straight high school national titles from 2004 to 2006. Recently, the quarterback for the Carroll Dragons, Quinn Ewers, may be the best quarterback to come from South Lake and the entire state of Texas for some time, and he may be perhaps the best prep quarterback in all of the United States. Ewers has the ability to bring the Carroll Dragons another championship banner in 2021, but everyone sees that he can do more. He should be able to dominate not only at the high school level, but the Division I collegiate level, and possibly, even someday, rule the NFL. Ewers started a firestorm on social media of praise and accolades that dates back to October of 2020 when he pulled his commitment from the University of Texas, a college located three and a half hours from his hometown, and a former football powerhouse as Ewers, a five-star recruit, would have been the highest rated quarterback prospect to come to Texas since Vince Young way back in 2002. Ewer said on his decommitment post via Twitter, Recently, as I've competed alongside my teammates during my junior season at South Lake Carroll, I've also taken some time to think about my future. Given the COVID-19 pandemic facing us, this has been a challenging year for students like myself. With the support of my family, I tried to navigate the recruiting process the best way I could. However, the more I've considered, the more I've come to realize that I didn't explore all options as thoroughly as I would have liked. Therefore, I've decided to decommit and reassess the situation before making such an important decision on my future. I will soon have a firm decision on where I will spend the next few formative years of my life and career, and I look forward to sharing that with you. Since that day in October of 2020, the rumors started swirling of where this next prep star would land. Months before his senior season of high school football even began, first the rumors called that he would commit to a Big Ten school, and those rumors were confirmed just a month later. In November of his junior year, as he proudly announced his commitment on Twitter and Instagram, a post that produced more than 40,000 likes, he stated that after high school, he would join THE Big Ten school, a powerhouse that has been a part of the college football playoffs five of the eight years since the method of determining national champions has been around. So what's going on guys, your boy Mike here, and today we're gonna to be breaking down Quinn Ewers, a potential transcendent talent at the quarterback position, exactly who he is as the Ohio State committed quarterback and the future of football. Really quickly, before we get to everything, if you could take a moment to sack the like button for the YouTube algorithm, most of this content gets copyright claimed and some of it even gets demonetized. And whenever your content gets demonetized, YouTube doesn't really share it because they can't make money off of it. And now that we get all that out of the way, let's get to this video. Quinn Ewers is 6 foot 3 and 206 pounds and looks like he belongs on a stage in Nashville with a guitar in his hands thanks to his bleached blonde mullet and country boy attitude. However, Ewers isn't a wild outlaw type of kid. Ewers' dad Curtis says honestly he's a pretty boring kid. He likes to hunt and fish and he's a film junkie. His mom Kirsten and his dad Curtis knew that he was a good athlete growing up but didn't know that he would be a blossoming football phenom. That is until they moved to Dallas and people started to take notice. A random guy, probably a Friday night lights diehard in South Lake, saw him throw and recommended to his parents that he work with a private quarterback coach. And the quarterback's coach compared Quinn to a 2021 top NFL draft pick. So Joe McCulley, said quarterback's coach, entered Quinn's life and Joe was a guy who had spent dozens of years in Oklahoma 
Texas and all over the United States, helping kids hone their throwing talents. McCauley, who had seen every kind of quarterback imaginable after a brief lesson with Quinn, told Ewers' mom, your kid is really good. Within a few weeks, McCauley compared Ewers to a quarterback who was getting ready to suit up for one of the dynasties in the NFL. McCauley told Quinn's parents that Ewers reminded him of a kid in Florida called Mac that him and a few fellow coaches nicknamed Mac the Knife, so he would call Quinn, Quinn the Knife. Ewers' dad didn't immediately ask who exactly that Mac was that his son was actually being compared to, but he did ask about a year later. When Curtis Ewers finally asked Joe McCauley who's Mac the Knife, McCauley responded with Mac Jones. By Quinn Ewers' sophomore year of high school, he was starting for the Carroll Dragons and playing some of the best football by a South Lake high schooler since the days of Chase Daniel. For those of you guys that don't know, Chase Daniel is a former Missouri quarterback from when Missouri was remarkably good and a longtime and very well paid NFL backup. Odessa Permian is a school that Friday Night Lights is based off of. It is one of the most notable programs in Texas high school football and was who Quinn Ewers had to face in his third high school football start. When Ewers, barely a teenager, stepped under the bright lights of one of Texas high school football's most famous fields, located 350 miles west of South Lake, he went 31 of 34 with 392 yards and four touchdowns. And the Dragons came away with the 48 to seven win. Turns out that one game wasn't a fluke as he became the quarterback to beat in only his sophomore year. In 14 games, he held a 72.4 completion percentage and passed for 4,003 yards, 45 touchdowns and three interceptions while he rushed for 568 yards and ran the ball in nine times. Carroll went 13 and one, made a run to the state quarterfinals and Ewers averaged five touchdowns a game in the largest and toughest class in Texas high school football. Against Denton, he outdueled the 2021 Texas A&M command, Eli Stowers, as Ewers threw for 450 yards and six touchdowns in a 46 to 34 victory. He showed his tenacity as well, as against Duncanville, a team that has been and was that season two, ranked top five in the nation, while the not even 16 year old routinely dropped back for a pass, he was hit with a flying helmet that had been dislodged from another player's head. Unfazed, he rapidly rolled to his left after being pushed from the pocket and dropped a 55 yard bomb into the end zone. As a 10th grader, Ewers was already being highlighted and he was already far ahead of where other NFL quarterbacks had been in their prep years as 40% of current NFL quarterbacks did not start as a signal caller until their junior or senior year of high school. In his first four games as a junior, he completed 68 of 101 throws for 1,221 yards with 17 touchdowns and only two interceptions averaging over 300 yards per game. Then Quinn Ewers was faced with the biggest challenge of his prep career, suffering a sports hernia that required surgery and would keep him on the sidelines until a playoff game on December 24th. In that game, Ewers would go 20 of 36 with 251 yards and three touchdowns as the Dragons beat Arlington Martin 30 to 26. The next game, Ewers had a career day throwing for 450 yards and six touchdowns, going 35 of 39 with one interception against Euless Trinity to advance to the state semifinals. Then, Facing pesky Duncanville, whom Carroll lost to in his sophomore year, he rallied his team to a remarkable 34-27 comeback win, and it was an upset of the ages as Duncanville was ranked as the fourth high school team in the nation. In that victory, Quinn completed 11 of 24 passes for 168 yards with one throwing and one rushing touchdown. The Carroll Dragons then fell to the Class 6A defending champions, Westlake Austin, in the state championship game 52 to 34. In that state championship loss, Ewers went 23 of 39 for 350 yards and three touchdowns and two interceptions. He finished his junior season going 159 of 241 with 2,442 yards, 28 touchdowns, and five interceptions. He was listed as the number one prospect via Dallas Morning News, a list of top 50 recruits for 2022. The paper described the quarterback by saying, in Ewers, a six foot three Ohio State pledge with an arm that makes even the most difficult throws look effortless. It doesn't take long to see why he's universally considered one of the best recruits in the country. That wasn't the only ranking graciously bestowed upon him. Currently heading into his final prep campaign, 
He is listed as a five-star prospect, the country's number one overall prospect, the number one pro-style quarterback, and the number one football prospect in Texas. Nearly every publication out there that ranks high school football players has Quinn Ewers as number one. Watching Ewers throw is something out of a sports movie where the quarterback can do no wrong. He is like Trevor Lawrence and I'm not the only one that compares Ewers to Trevor Lawrence, as Quinn is very mobile and can rush with the football on foot, but still has number one passing skills from the pocket. In April, he participated in the Elite 11 Regional, a camp in Dallas, and after his performance, he was quickly invited to the finals, which will take place in California on June 29th to July 1st. With that finals invitation, Quinn joins a long list of Ohio State quarterbacks who have qualified for the finals, such as Justin Fields in 2017 and CJ Stroud in 2019, who were both MVPs in that camp as well. We finally got to see more of Quinn Ewers last week at the Quarterback Retreat, a $2,000 camp with eight hours of total training hosted by Steve Clarkson a Pasadena quarterback guru who has tutored signal callers like Ben Roethlisberger, which is truly elite company to be in. Ewers took his throws looking effortlessly clad in Adidas pants when all the others wore shorts. Everyone agreed that he was the top quarterback of the camp as well. From his sidearm slings to the three-step drop and unleashing a 70-yard bomb with all, he had pinpoint accuracy throw after throw. The thing about his velocity was that there was no windup or long release. It was a wrist flick like Patrick Mahomes' throw, and the ball seemed to have a motor that immediately gained velocity when it exited his hand. It was the same effortless toss no matter if it was a straight drop back or a roll to his left or right. Ewer's ball had so much fire that some of the receivers were hit in the chest with the football. One receiver even had to be revived via a defibrillator. Just kidding about the defibrillator, I'm just making sure you're still here. As a matter of fact, if you made it to this point of the video and you're still rocking with us, comment defibrillator in the comment section down below. Now back to the video because this next part's insane. The accuracy, the finesse, the anticipation, and the pure athleticism puts Ewer's on a different level. Even off-platform throws were sharp and on target. Then there is his competitiveness. The Steve Clarkson QB retreat is a laid-back camp. A lot of quarterbacks are not at full speed, as most are already committed to college, and it's more of an opportunity for prep quarterbacks to talk with each other and be mentored from their counselors who are current Division I quarterbacks. However, Ewers' performance in that retreat was different. He was serious with every rep and improved the more throws he took. As for Ewers' future, all we know is that there will be a lot of eyes on him this fall during the high school football season. Then, barring any unforeseen circumstances, he will then go on to Ohio State. The Buckeyes' CJ Stroud looks like he has a chance to wow the scouts and should be a three years and declare for the NFL draft type of player. What this scenario means for Quinn is that he could redshirt for just one season, learn the system, and then continue the winning tradition in Columbus as the starting quarterback and make that push of winning over NFL scouts' hearts just like he did with all those Division I institutions. However, even today, it's not just those from the college world who are amazed with Ewers. The NFL is impressed and highlighted him via an Instagram post on a Saturday night. Even former NFL players are very impressed. Pat McAfee, who is the most candid podcaster and just a forward guy in general, is sold on Ewers and even sounded a little bit infatuated with Quinn. Okay, yeah. and he, he can deliver the rock. I assume, though, he can throw at 70, 80 yards. McAfee also compared him to Rich Gannon and threw out the word moxie. And his, hey, he, he's got that Rich Gannon. He's got the ability to go oh, yeah. here. Mm -hmm. He's going down yonder. This Quinn Ewer guy's going up over top. He's got that flow. Yeah. Then, in a humorous but really forthright in the kind of potential this kid has, Pat McAfee said, I'm a big, big Quinn Ewers fan. Kind of pissed he has to go to college. Wish we'd get him in the NFL right now. You know what I mean? Trevor Sikama from the Draft Network interviewed Quinn recently at that QB retreat in Los Angeles. Ewers was poised, relaxed, and gave thoughtful answers during the three-minute interview. You know, it's real fun. It's laid back. Uh, it's out here having a good time, entertaining some people, and it's just been a lot of fun. He then spoke about how he is spending more time in the film room, learning defenses, and working on his footwork. Yeah, uh, I've just been in the film room a lot more, uh, you know, focusing a lot more on, you know, defenses and just sure. recognizing defenses and 
Uh, you know, just working on my footwork a lot, you know, uh, escape drills, stuff like that. When asked about what area his growth was the most evident in, he spoke about throwing off platform and arm angle. Yeah, I, I definitely say just like off platform and arm angle type stuff. For sure, I work on that a lot with uh, the place I go to train. It's called Apex, it's over there in Fort Worth. And with that, he tied his first major media appearance with a nice shiny bow. The good news for us is that Quinn Ewers' story is just beginning. There will be a brighter spotlight on him each time he touches a football, and he will be faced with challenges playing in a very tough high school football class. However, I believe, and the rest of the world is starting to believe too, that Ewers' next big thing is to throw a football be it on a Texas high school field, a Power 5 conference field, or ultimately an NFL field.